Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. Today, I'm going to talk about an interesting topic. It is going to be about the beast system. I saw a video by Chuck Baldwin, and I have mentioned him before, because I watch his videos once in a while. And again, I want to definitely again warn that none nobody can be fully trusted and every information that you get from any teacher it doesn't matter whether it's a pastor or a lay person we need to check it out whether it is the truth or not okay so this is very very important so I don't fully agree with everything this Chuck Baldwin is saying. However, there's lots of things that I do agree with him. And this video called Many Antichrists, One Beastly System, message by Dr. Chuck Baldwin on January 13th. And it was posted uh, or published on January 15th. So that is important for you to know, so you can go and watch it, and again, watch it critically, okay? I am not saying that you should agree with everything, but I think he has an interesting look at things, okay? An interesting look that I have not looked at. I have talked about the beast, the different beasts, the four beasts of Daniel 7, I have talked about that. Um, that. There are four kingdoms that will arise in this world. And the last king kingdom will be destroyed by Messiah and his bride. Okay? And then Messiah will establish, or Messiah will, of course, destroy the, the, the last beast, the fourth beast. And then he will establish his kingdom with him and his bride. It's very clearly described in Daniel when you do your study. And I don't want to go into detail today. Uh, I want to look at this beastly system. Now, he was talking about different beastly systems or different beasts even that, um, that are presented not only in Daniel, but also in Revelation. He says that the beasts you can find in the New Testament. But we also find this word beast absolutely um, in Daniel. And I don't know why he didn't mention that. Daniel uh, was the first one mentioning these beasts in Daniel uh, chapter 7. He mentions four beasts. And this last beast, of course, is the Roman Empire. And if that is the last beast, then the last beast still exists. Okay, so he was looking at the beastly system, not showing or saying who really um, has something to do with it. Well, he, he said it without naming any names, and I thought that was kind of interesting. He didn't name any names. He didn't say, oh, Obama or, or Trump or whatever, but he recognized very clearly that this beastly system has been around for a long time. Matter of fact, four beasts, so they have been around since the Persian Empire. Persian, Greek, they're all beasts, okay? And they're all tracing themselves back to the originator of the beast systems, which is, of course, Satan. Satan established himself as, of course, the founder of these beasts. These beasts are worldly systems which are trying to mislead humankind away from Messiah. Okay? In the Old Testament, we were not even supposed to follow Messiah or even believe that he is coming, that God has a plan for us. Because God told his people from the beginning that God has a plan and he is waiting for Messiah. He's going to bring Messiah eventually. 
and that he is the one who's going to rescue us and save us because we um, rebelled against God. But this beastly system was put in place in order to distract people from God and from his plan. So uh, Chuck was talking about, Chuck Baldwin was talking about that this beastly system has been around for a long time and is around right now. Okay, right now. And I was not aware of how much we are involved in this beast system. Okay, I'm always thinking, oh, this beast system, political ruler. Okay, um, and that's political ruler is, is um, you know, persecuting the saints. But we are part of that system. And I'm not, I was not aware that we are actually part of this system more than what we think. See, we can put it away on this, you know, antichrist, or we can put it on, on this, on this uh, ruler, on this government leader. But yet this beastly system, and he says, Chuck says that very clearly, um, involves everything, everything, okay, everything, not, not just everything in politics, but everything in religion, everything in um, uh, economics. Our whole economic system is built by this beastly system. We see this. When we're talking about our government. We actually know, or most people really uh, know, that our government is run by companies, uh, by, by money, okay? Number one, it's run by the banking system, okay? That's, I mean, no doubt, okay? The banking system. Federal Reserve is not governmental, but yet Federal Reserve runs our government, okay? The, the, the people that work for the government and for the Federal Reserve, they, they are one and the same, okay? Then the government is run by big farmer, pharma, uh, pharmaceutical companies. They have lots of lobby in government. And whoever uh, is, is contributing to the, the, the uh, um, elections and to the presidents, how, where do you think these presidents are getting their money from? Their support? Well, from big companies like pharma, uh, suitable companies like um, insurance. Insurance is a big one. Follow the trail. Who is behind all these insurance? You probably can get two couple people. And they have many different insurances. But really on top is one person. And I'm talking about insurance in general. All insurance. Health insurance. Um, car insurance, house insurance, life insurance, what other insurance do we have? Tons and tons and tons and tons of insurances. And who is behind it? And who is making the money off from the people? I mean, there's an insurance for when you die, okay? There's an insurance for, I mean, you name it, there's an insurance. And, and, and we are paying we are paying, we're being made afraid, so we get this expensive insurance, and we think we can't live without it. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I have insurance on my house, and it goes up constantly, constantly. You know, and something is wrong, all right, they'll up it even more. Same with car insurance. So insurance companies have a strong lobby in politics, and they will tell how the the government and how the people, you know, even our representatives, okay, are bought by these companies. Um, and, of course, on top of these companies are few people who have the money and who have the say what's going to happen. Okay, we see that specifically with big pharmaceutical companies. Very clearly. They run the government. 
They run the government because they support our politicians with money. And our politicians want the money. Okay? So our system is very intertwined with companies. Big companies. Okay? That have lots of money. And the bigger the company, well, the more they have influence. Even the smaller companies, they are connected with each other, okay? Through these um, secret organizations. For example, the Freemasons. Many people are in the Freemasons because that way they um, have uh, more advantages, okay? More advantages to get a job, to be successful in a job. So if you are in these, um, you know, secret societies, whatever they are, um, you have a better chance, you know, to get a job and to work yourself up the ladder. That is all beast system. And I never looked at it in such of um, as a, 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 a depth it, because you have to really go down the rabbit hole and that's basically you know what it is you have to go down the, the rabbit hole there is so many more um facets to this whole problem see i always thought obese oh, system is something that is not affecting me but it affects every person I sit in front of the TV, I sit in front of the media because all these media, TV, everything is run and controlled by this beast system. So we can say, okay, this and this is this person is behind it, the Jesuits behind it, the scientists are behind it, blah 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 blah. Well eventually it's it's ending up with Satan. Bottom line, we're living in this world that is run by Satan. And Satan uses his human beings, his little minions, to do his dirty work. And the further you get up on this ladder system, this hierarchy system, remember it's a pyramid, right? The further you go up on this pyramid, um, the closer you understand, you know, what's really going on and how everything is connected to Satan. Okay, so that's why lots of people say that these politicians and these whatever uh, people that run this country are Satanists. Because yes, of course, they are connected with Satan. They think Satan is the ruler of this world and Satan gives them power. And power is what most people want. Okay, it is unfortunate, but we are a fallen, we are fallen creatures. We rebelled against God, and because we rebelled against God, we are fallen creatures. And in reality, we belong to Satan. Okay, when we fell, when Adam and Eve fell, or the man, the first man and the first woman fell, um, some people think or believe that it actually had to do with something with sex, sex, sexual uh, activity, okay? In that really um, Eve had sexual relations really with this snake. Now, do your research. I have read this um, many, and I know, uh, you know, it is uh, comes out of these mystery religions, but it makes a lot of sense. I mean, these mystery religions don't make everything up, okay? Uh, we're not supposed to follow them, but they don't make everything up either. So they know more sometimes what happened in the past than we do. And they cover it up pretty good because they don't want the general population to know what's going on, okay? That's exactly what's going on as you go up this pyramid, okay? This hierarchy, the further you go up, the more you may know, but you, the less you tell the people below. 
okay, the general population. That's the whole thing about secret societies, that they keep esoteric, it's called esoteric knowledge. They want to keep the truth from the regular people and keep them in darkness. So in the beginning, they say that something happened Something happened. It's not just, oh, we rebelled against God and we ate this fruit. They say the fruit actually is symbolic. It, it really stands for a sexual activity. Whatever that sexual activity was, I have no idea. But remember the time before the flood when the, the fallen uh, angels had relations with the women? Okay, you can read that. Before the flood, um, they had relations and they created these Nephilims. Well, our DNA was absolutely corrupt, corrupt after that. And that is one of the reasons why God sent the flood. Okay, that's why he sent the flood. Well, the same thing happened, I believe, during that time when they start, when they rebelled against God. Something was changed in their DNA. And because something changed in their DNA, I believe we all are sinners. We all are corrupt. Our whole world is corrupt. Okay, because something was changed in the DNA that corrupted everything. Just like before the flood, um, you know, the human beings were again corrupted even more and these Nephilims were created which were the giants and God had to destroy humankind to a certain extent well a big extent okay huge extent but um, even you know Noah um, of course had this corrupted DNA from the, the first fall um, <coughs> so we are all corrupted human beings. Every one of us has some flaw in our DNA and therefore we run after Satan. Okay? We don't mind doing the little dirty job of Satan. Not until we really realize and we will realize that you know the plan of God and that we really supposed to be following God and then we really make the an, an intention to follow God and in Messiah the you know the God in the flesh then we have a chance to maybe uh, reject the things that Satan is doing we have a chance to look behind the scene and see all the things that Satan are do, is doing in this world. And even sometimes we don't see it fully. I mean, what um, Chuck Baldwin said here, I really never saw it that clearly that we are all involved in this beastly, he calls it beastly system. From the beginning, from the beginning of time, Daniel only talked about four beastly systems, okay? But there were beastly systems before that. Because, see, Daniel, that's when he lived in the beastly system of Persia. So there were beastly systems before that. Before Persia, there is the Assyrian, okay? And the Assyrians were the, the, the beastly system of Nimrod. Okay, we, we, we hear about Nimrod once in a while, the guy that most likely was the one that built Babel. Okay, the tower to Babel or Babel, whatever you want to call it, how you sound it out. When they built this tower uh, that, that was supposed to reach heaven. I mean, he was the first, uh, again, first person that rebelled terribly and his wife or mother because she was his mother and then she was his wife. Can you imagine that? Yes, she was his mother and then she married him. Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable story. If you ever look at the story of Nimrod 
and his mother slash uh, wife. So they started this whole beastly system again after um, the uh, after the flood because God destroyed everything. And this Nimrod came out of Canaan, which was the son of Ham. Okay, so again, there we see things went really bad. After what, two, three generations? And uh, this guy Nimrod, uh, or Canaan, he established again this one world religion, one world um, dominion. He had one world dominion. He had one world religion. He he united everybody, and not in a good way. No, he um, uh, um, ruled over everybody. Okay, they didn't do it, uh, you know, willingly. Okay, he he um, conquered. He conquered everybody. And made this one world government. During that one world government, Abraham was born under Nimrod. And Nimrod wanted to kill Abraham. And so his father sent him to his relative or great-grandfather, Shem. Um, and so that's where Abraham was raised. Shem, the son of Noah. Okay? So you have to understand this whole system. But the system started, this beastly system started a long, long, long time ago. That's why when you read in Revelation, you see the beast and the whore on top, which is, of course, a religion. A reli uh, yeah, a religion. Because woman is always considered uh, the uh, uh, religion, okay? We know that the church is a woman, okay? And uh, a whore is a woman. Um, and it is a religious system. So you see the beast and you see the religious system on top, which you cannot um, take away this religious system from the beast. The beast, which is, of course, the political system, the economy, and everything that people, uh, you know, need to live. Everything is ruled by the, the beast. And then with the, the, the woman on top, which is the religious system of that beast. And that goes back also to Nimrod and uh, his mother wife. Uh, person. See, Rama Miss, I think, I hope I pronounced that right, but I can never pronounce her name right. See, Rama Miss, something like that. So if you want to ever do, again, this, I have mentioned this book, The Two Babylons uh, by Hislop, and you can look it up um, and see really how you can trace these things back. So we have been living in this beastly system as well already. This beastly system we're living in right now is really the beast out of the earth. Okay? The beast out of the earth. That's what we're living in right now. This is the last system. But this system, the beast out of the earth, uh, gives honor and gets its power from the beast out of the earth. I mean, from the sea, which really is the beastly system that um, came out of the fall of the Roman Empire, which was the European uh, beastly system. And that was a beastly system for sure. Okay, who was sitting on top? Well, the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church was ruling it all. Okay, he was uh, um, controlling it. Uh, People need to understand history, but you need to understand also, and you need to get deeper today. I have said that before, that we're now living in this new world order. And we're living in this beast out of the earth system. And I like it the way he puts it. It's a system. It's a system that affects us in every area of our life. Okay? 
If you want to become successful in life, you will have to become part of the system. Bottom line, okay? You will not make it very far up the top if you don't belong to the beastly system. So how can you belong to beastly system? Well, again, these um, secret, secret societies, okay? Secret societies, people that pat on, uh, each other on the back. Um, you know, I have never been in, a, in any of these things. That's why it's hard for me to, to um, well, for instance, the Freemasons. Okay, when you are in Freemasons, you, you have advantages and you, other people will help you. But then again, you are also being brainwashed to believe certain things and you're bowing down to a certain system. So just that's the way it is. And I, I, I can tell you that that's actually one. Then again, like he was also saying that if you want to be successful in your job, like, for instance, a corporation. How does a corporation um, actually um, make it? How can it be successful? I'll tell you only if they're supported by a higher up um, agency or person that is higher up in this pyramid. Okay? He was mentioning, I think, Bill Gates, who supposedly started his success story in a garage and he was really uh, questioning how in the world this Bill Gates can make it from the garage from a garage all the way up to a millionaire or billionaire or trillionaire um, well you have to have influence okay let's say Zionism is one of those groups that you belong to and they will help you to get up the ladder or in the Catholic you're Catholic you become a part of the Catholic um, secret societies which is the Jesuits and you make it up the ladder okay that's just the way it is so you have to be in certain societies and certain secret societies or else you will not make it up the ladder okay you have to belong to certain groups, but when you belong to certain groups, you are being brainwashed to believe what they believe, okay? And that's the way you make it up, the ladder. Now, let me mention something. I have mentioned that I don't have very many views and... Um, I also believe, I have said that and mentioned that, that even like for instance, on YouTube, you are monitored. If you present the right topics, then you will get more views, okay? You present things like guinea pigs or painting or, uh, uh, you know, arts and crafts, you see, those are all innocent little things and you watch those and you don't really learn the truth, do you? You sit there and make your little dots and you draw your little um, mandala or whatever it is, you know, arts and whatever. You, you know, there's so much stuff on this YouTube that you can get lost in, right? And never, ever have to think about the truth. Never. Okay, and that's the people they want on YouTube. They want things where people watch. Okay, what people have in what people have interest in, and what do people have interest in? Most people don't want to know the truth. Okay, they want to be successful when they come home, they want to relax. Okay, but you will never find the truth that way. Never. Because this whole system is built on keeping you blind and asleep. Any one of you know, probably most people know, the, these film, films, The Matrix. If you haven't watched them, I recommend them highly. Okay? Highly. Why? 
because we are in a matrix. We are being, we are in a, in a very, very, uh, it's really a matrix, okay? We are only fed what this beast system wants us to hear. That's what we are fed. Public television, public media, they all feed you what this beast system wants you to hear. Remember, the beast system behind the beast system really is who? Satan. But he uses different people. He's using, uh, right now, with the beast system we're in, he is using the United States big time. Our government, Mr. Trump, okay, our president, and it doesn't matter who is, a pres who's, who's the president. It doesn't matter. They are minions and puppets of the beast system. Okay, you can go up further. We are saying, everybody's saying, oh, there's a shadow government. Yeah, there's a shadow government. Who is behind? Who is pulling the strings, um, you know, of Trump? Jesuits, papacy. I mean, you can you can go either way you want. Uh, Zionists, okay. Yeah, Zionists have something to do. Why? Because they contributed uh, to him becoming a president. So yeah, they have something to do with it. The money, whatever, I mean, you name it, okay? They have to stay on top, and so they have to please people. They have to please people who are up there in power and have money. Um, Trump is not independently rich. He ain't, okay? He is not. He doesn't have enough money to have power. He didn't get up there because he is independently rich. That is a bunch of uh, um, BS, really. Okay, BS. I'm sorry, but that is people believe that is is unbelievable. No, he is up there because people higher up on this pyramid made it uh, possible for him to be president. They saw in him something that they liked, and he promised them that he will do whatever they want. Okay, to get this plan um, in action. What is the plan again? The plan is destruction right now, at this point, destruction of the church. Okay, because their ultimate goal, and here comes the Antichrist spirit in, the ultimate goal of the Antichrist, and it's not Antichrist in, in a singular, but it's in plural. Okay, there's many Antichrists. The Antichrist spirit, there's an Antichrist spirit behind it, okay? But many human beings uh, have that Antichrist spirit and work for this Antichrist spirit. Many, many, many. And the plan of this Antichrist spirit is right now to destroy the church. The true believers, I'm not going to say Christians, why not? Because so many call themselves Christians who are not, okay? Who are not. I am talking about here the true believers in Messiah, okay? The true believers who follow Messiah, who follow God's plan. Remember, God's plan is to rescue his fallen human kind. That's what God's plan is. Everything. Messiah came to rescue the fallen human kind. Okay? Very, very important to understand. And so the Antichrist spirit works against that. He first wants to prevent Messiah from coming, which he couldn't. Now he is preventing and stirring up the church so they will not be ready for Messiah's return, okay? So they're preventing, they're killing, they're deceiving. It doesn't matter for them whether they are killed or or whether they deceive them. It doesn't matter, okay? So that is what the, the Antichrist spirit is doing. And he is using human minions, human puppets to do so. It, they, it, Satan wants to put up a world system in order to do that. Not necessarily to rule. He just wants to be uh, destroying the church at this point. The church. Okay? 
and he wants to wants them to be deceived and that's why people we need to really read our bible because there are many false teachers out there many false prophets out there many and their goal is to confuse you that's what their goal is is to confuse you and deceive you so you will not be ready for the rapture okay don't tell me there is no rapture i don't want to hear it there is a rapture okay there is a rapture rapture means that the church will be taken out into heaven into the hupa if you know what a hupa is that's the the wedding chamber jesus is our bridegroom he has bought us okay he has bought the the bride uh, price and or yeah bride price and he will come and take us into the bridal chamber okay that's what the rapture is when he comes back for his bride study traditional jewish wedding then you will understand things better and i have done plenty of videos about that okay but i'm coming to an end right now think about that maybe watch this video by chuck baldwin and it's called liberty fellowship liberty fellowship mt okay and see if you get something from what he is saying that you can maybe relate to okay anyways always read your bible study your bible and always let the holy spirit guide you